Hi, I'm Ricky Calabat, and welcome to my Leave a Legacy channel. My intentions are to provide you with valuable information that could alter the trajectory of your life by creating new opportunities for your future and your family. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. And uh, if you like what you hear, please subscribe, please share it. And today I want to talk about being at home, right? or being quarantined, or whatever we want to call it, uh, thanks to the pandemic that we're having with uh, the coronavirus. And yes, it is happening to everyone around the world. And yes, there's a lot of talk about it online and social media and the news. I mean, you can't get away from it, right? I mean, just think, two months ago, here we were wishing that we had more time in our day to do all of the things that we have to do that we just can't seem to find time to do it. And so we were in a little rat race and we're running, running, running and doing a million things at one time. And then simply overnight, pretty much, the world stopped, things came to a halt, things got serious, they got escalated to a certain point, fear set in, anxiety, depression, whatever you want to call it, it's because we were uncertain as to what are the ramifications of what we're experiencing. And they're still there, right? And I think, um, you know, the only little comfort that we have is that we know that everyone is in this together and that the world leaders seem to be doing what they feel is in our best interest to get us back on track and helping us as much as possible. So as long as we know we have some kind of a support there and hopefully you know it doesn't get much worse, I think we should start looking at the future. Start looking at the things that we can do today that will put us in a better position once, this, once we get past this transition period. So back to what I was saying. Where is your list of all of those things that you wish you had time to do two months ago? Right? Now is the time to do those things. Now is the time. It's not the time to be putting our head in the sand and waiting for this to blow over and, oh my God, I don't know why this is happening. Um, no, now is the time to take advantage of this extra time that we have and whatever that looks like to you. Spending more time with your family, kids are not in school, doing more activities with them. Yes, at home. Uh, I know that we've been uh, doing a lot of artwork with our kids and playing games and uh, and it's been really fun. It's been that part has kind of been the best part actually of uh, spending time uh, with your closest loved ones. And so, um, you know, that's one thing that we're all going to be doing no matter what. But what about those other things um, that you've always wanted to do? Such as, when is the last time you backed up your computer? When is the last time you downloaded all of your pictures and videos from your phone onto an external hard drive and especially on your computer right we need to move that data into an external hard drive someplace safe because we just don't know what might happen if it crashes like this is the time to do those things that we know we should be doing but we just never seem to have time for it I know me personally I've been going through my phone and deleting old pictures or things that just were not necessary um, videos moving them into folders, doing some kind of organizing, doing some filing, and even printing some pictures. So some of the photos that I've had, you know, I have two little boys, four and three, been going through, making albums, uploading them into this app called Chatbooks, and creating uh, albums, creating real albums, right, with printed pictures so that we can share it with them and we can look at them with them and uh, we're already doing that with their younger pictures and they seem to love it so that's another great idea um, what else can we do it's springtime so we've got spring cleaning so um, I know that you have closets that you probably haven't been touched in a while um, maybe your wardrobe maybe your clothes you can start giving away clothes start changing over um, your, your closets moving some things around uh, maybe basement. When's the last time you were in the basement and looking in boxes and just kind of going through 
all of these things that are there that we haven't touched in a while, this is the time to go there, clean that up. Clean up the basement. Um, maybe if you want some home projects, this is the perfect time. Home Depot is still open, Lowe's is still open. I know I've been doing some um, minor repairs around the home. I'm not a handyman, but I definitely have been changing out some, uh, uh, some different things that needed attention around the house. Um, like I said, our kids, or if you, are, um, if you are pregnant and you have a baby on the way, hey guys, maybe now the time to go and go baby-proof your home, right? It's never too early to get that started because that does take time and right now would be the best time to do it because once that child is born I promise you you're not gonna have the time that you have right now so if you are pregnant or anything like that go start baby proofing your home right now we're actually in the opposite so our youngest one just turned three and so uh, I have been de-baby proofing the home and taking away all of the all of the things from the cabinets and, and, and whatnot um, just to kind of make it easier for everyone else to get to what we need to get to. So things like that. Uh, what about your car? When's the last time you really cleaned out your car, your glove box, um, those kind of things. And what about personally? What about the books that are stacked up high on your nightstand? When you know, jump into your books, start reading. Um, and what about other things around the house? How about your photos? How about all those picture frames that have photos from 10 years ago that uh, they're cute and they're nice, but now it's time to create new memories, right? We have new memories, print them, put, put them in your new photos so that we can get to a, another chapter, right? So evolving, so think, take, think of this as a time to evolve, evolve your life, evolve your environment, change what you're, you know, what you're doing, what you're seeing, um, all the things around you, and that will kind of stimulate a little more positivity, that will start making us think about the future, start thinking about, okay, this is where we're going, this is what we're doing, and then you can have a, a better mindset rather than kind of worrying about, about the past and, you know, how we got to this point. Uh, what else? So, if you guys have some ideas, please drop them in the comments section about what you're doing or how you're taking advantage of this. Uh, yeah, you could do some binging, right? You could do some Netflix. Um, I have been watching Lucifer, actually. I've never heard of it, and then uh, someone told me about it, and I started watching it, and I kind of like it. It's got a little good meaning to it, and I don't know. I like that show. Um, what about writing? If you've always wanted to be a writer, start jotting down some things. Now's the perfect time to start writing. I know I've been writing a lot of, a lot of things. I've been wanting to make more videos. I was kind of not in a good place to make some new videos. And now <clears throat> I'm feeling like I've got my energy back and I have uh, my mindset back. And I remembered why I wanted to make videos. Um, not only to share experiences with, with you, um, you know, but for my, for my little boys, I want them to have some opportunities to see dad as they grow up later in life and, uh, and hopefully, you know, these messages can, you know, assist them on their journey through life as well. So, uh, what else? Uh, maybe you could start making plans for the future, right? So, again, when you have something to look forward to, you don't have to go buy a plane ticket, but you can say, hey, I want to go in October, November, December, next year, whatever it is. Start looking at travel destinations. Start looking at things to do because the prices are really, really, really cheap. And if you do buy something that is uh, free cancellation, you've got nothing to lose. And the prices are amazing right now. So if you, you know, get a hotel, all-inclusive, something, something, Wherever, look at some destinations, um, think about where I want to be a year from now, start thinking about the future, start thinking about where that I'm going to be, and then you start making some plans now. As long as you can cancel them with no, with no um, penalty, then, you know, I think you're in a good place. Of course, business, right? Yes, if your business, everyone's business has been affected by this to some degree, and I do think 
that yes, we have to concentrate on restructuring our expenses, given our income, take advantage of some of the government support, and also uh, start planning. Maybe this is the time to evaluate the systems that we have. Maybe our CRM, our client relationship management tool. Maybe that's something that we can revisit, clean it up, um, our marketing, uh, different things like that for our business. Now would be a good time to maybe mastermind and get some ideas um, that way. Uh, I mean, this is an awesome time. I mean, this is where you know ingenuity takes over, <laughs> and we realize, wow, I have to do more with less, and we make it happen. You know, we're survivors, and that's what we do. We figure out what we have to do uh, to take something that it wasn't supposed to work the way that that was intended, but we can use it in a different way and still get to a need that we need to have fulfilled. Does that make sense? So, uh, I like a MacGyver, right? MacGyver will take something that, you know, is used for this purpose and he uses it for that purpose and it still works. So that's ingenuity, right? Is take something, and this is where lots of ideas are going to be born. Because all of a sudden we have all these new found needs or things that are not going to just disappear, right? I mean, these are things that are, we could use forever uh, with the right mindset, with the right... Um, people working together collaborating on some great ideas. I know I have some mastermind groups that I'm part of and we're coming up with some awesome, awesome ideas of how to make business better in the future. I know everyone's on Zoom calls and doing all these other different things, but there's a whole other way of life that will be born during this year that I think is going to propel moving forward in uh, businesses in a whole different way. So think outside the box. Um, obviously, take care of your family, right? Love, friends, that's priority number one. Uh, and then think about maximizing this time, what you can do, the things that you haven't touched in a long time that need your attention, and, um, and let's make the best of this, okay? Listen, God bless, stay safe. Thank you for watching, and again, please subscribe uh, and share. Take care. Hi. I'm Ricky Calabat and welcome to my Leave a Legacy channel. My intentions are to provide you with valuable information that could alter the trajectory of your life by creating new opportunities for yourself, your family, and your future. If this is your first time on my channel, uh, please subscribe and share if you enjoy the content of the information. Today I want to talk to you about bucket list and why do we want one why do we need one do we even have one I believe the answer is yes I think everybody should have a I guess it's called a bucket list I believe you should call it something different um, because it's uh, okay what do I want to do before I die or before I pass away um, and usually I guess uh, before I think people would look at a bucket list as I want to go to travel to Italy or I want to you know go swimming with the dolphins or I don't know it was more based upon experiences and now I think a bucket list is kind of more of a what what are your intentions like what what type of legacy do you want to leave behind for others? And so I think it's a new twist on that. Um, don't get me wrong, you can still go to Italy, you can still go to you know, Europe and you know, do those things. So how do you create a bucket list? Well, I guess the question you ask yourself is, if I were to die tomorrow, what would I regret that I didn't do? Right? Or where did I not go? Or what did I not say to somebody that I wanted to say to them? Right? So all of these things should be on your, let's call it my legacy list. Because I don't like the bucket thing. The bucket is, okay, you're passed away, you kick the bucket, and you're dead. Um, it's more of a legacy list. And that's why I created this channel, right? Is because I thinking of my legacy 
for my family, in particular my two young boys, uh, and I'm hoping to share this information with the world, but also one day after I'm gone that they can replay these videos or they can see me uh, and maybe learn something from me while I have the opportunity to do that um, even for the years that I'm gone because my, 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 my boys are very young right and I don't know you know we nobody knows how long we're going to live so anyway the list is our legacy list right sure put down your destinations put down the places that you want to go to where do you want to travel um, but also put down like why like why do you want to go there because at some point you're going to need to prioritize your legacy list um, and then you might realize that some of the things that you thought were important before maybe they're not as important anymore um, but I do encourage you to also put on there um, you know what do I want to do right and that's maybe your career maybe it's your family maybe um, it's creating a foundation how am I contributing to the world um, or to my you know family children education like what do I want to do physically right um, maybe be in the best shape of your life uh, something like that right uh, and then also and I think this is what's really important and this is the thing that we can't take back is you know what do we want to say you know who are the important people in our lives that we want to make sure that they know that we love them that uh, we care about them or we appreciate them for different things and and be specific be specific I love you because of you know <clears throat> the way you make me smile uh, when I come home from a long day at work or I appreciate you because you are the best spouse because you take care of me and you do things for me like whatever it is be very specific when you're telling someone something um, and and even it could be in a card right or a note uh, something along those lines can be on your legacy list because it's a gentle reminder just to make sure that the important people in your life they know how much you care about them again because life is so precious we never know uh, what may happen tomorrow and again if you were to die tomorrow what is it that you wish you had said done or experienced so that's how I make my legacy list and I encourage you to start jotting down as much as you can and then the why right this is what I want to do say or go and why and that's how we prioritize it into saying okay what's more important for me to you know save enough money um, <clears throat> for a new car or a new home or do I want to travel to Paris or to South Africa or wherever you want to do prioritize it because what you're going to realize is that that list becomes fairly large once you have enough things right you're talking about my whole legacy and I've got all this time and I've got all these places all these things that I want to do um, there's going to come a point in time where you're going to realize okay there's only so much right my life expectancy is 70 something um, what if I weren't going to make it to that how much time do I have how many of these items will I check off my list per year to ensure that I can get to that um, get to the most important things at least on my list you know before I do pass on uh, and remember that it's also it's going to change as you grow older, as you mature, as your family dynamics change, so will some of the items on that list. But I think it's very, very important to have that legacy list in place, uh, especially to have something to look forward to, to have uh, you know future aspirations. Um, I think it helps you with your with your mindset of why do I get up every day. Uh, my big purpose, my, my why in life is to, you know, provide and to protect the f people in my life and my family. Um, so I think that list is kind of like a, 
yeah, I don't want to say goals, but yes, it's goal oriented, right? It's things that we want to accomplish, that all that we want to do, so some level of satisfaction, some level of fulfillment. Uh, and that is extremely important, right? It's almost like affirmations. So create a legacy list and put those things on there and then you feel so accomplished when you check them off, right? And remember, it doesn't have to be something like you have to save up for 10 years in order to do it. You know, it can be something um, as simple as organizing all of the pictures on my phone or saving everything from one place to another into an external hard drive, right? I mean, because that's a big legacy item are your valuables, right? Valuables, how are you going to pass on your valuables to your next generations in your life? And what does that look like? Maybe you have to create a will, create a trust, create uh, these other legal documents to ensure that things happen the way you wish for them to happen when you're gone now you have the chance to make those decisions and so I urge you to please put those things in place uh, and it'll make you feel better it'll make you feel focused it'll make you feel uh, accomplished and that you have a purpose and you're working towards something okay so legacy list not a bucket list and good luck. Please put in the comments if you have ideas or suggestions or, or anything. I promise I will, uh, I will reply. And uh, I wish you guys all to be safe. And God bless. Hi, I'm Ricky Calabat. And welcome to my Leave a Legacy channel. My intentions are to provide you with valuable information that could alter the trajectory of your life by creating new opportunities for your family and your future. If this is your first time here, please share and subscribe if you like the content and I uh, greatly appreciate it. And today I want to talk to you about the stock market. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, as we are going through this pandemic, uh, global crisis, whatever you want to call it, today is actually April 10. So I want to make sure that uh, we document the date, April 10, 2020. And so what I want to talk about is your retirement, is your future, is your money. And that is something I believe is of great importance uh, to everyone. And I, I am the CEO of Miami Living Homes, and I've had that title for um, 14 years now. Prior to that, I was a financial consultant. I was a stockbroker from um, 98 until 2001. So if you recall back then, there was the internet bubble uh, that burst and that was um, <laughs> very, very detrimental to a lot of people's portfolios. Everyone keeps talking about the global financial crisis, which is in 2008. Well, I believe what we're going to see in the next 12 months is going to be that and more when it comes to the stock market because we have had the biggest bull market run that we've ever had in the history of the stock market right i mean from 2009 until two months ago you know the market has been on fire i mean it has been just uh, just an anomaly, right? It's never happened before of the growth that we had in 2009. We were at like, you know, 8,000 was the Dow Jones, right? It topped out right around 30,000. And that was just a couple of months ago. So we have had a tremendous, tremendous growth for 11 years, pretty much. And the longest bull market before that is maybe seven or eight years uh, and those were with you know pretty moderate returns not the type of returns that we have seen so with the stock market what goes up sometimes tends to come down uh, what we do know is that yes over the long term 
the stock market continues to go higher and higher and higher over the long term and there are these little bumps in the road well I think the bump that we're going to be experiencing is going to be uh, as severe if not worse than 2008 and actually probably going to be closer to the Y2K in 2000 which that took like you know a couple of years to recover um, so my and again I'm not telling you what to do I don't have a crystal ball but I do want to share with you my knowledge uh, and m what I believe is going to happen and maybe it can help you protect your nest egg or you know help you plan you know for the the future um, I believe right now is a good time to sell some stock sell some portfolio sell some of your holdings if they are in uh, equities right equities are the the stocks right if you have bonds if you have other commodities or you know different other um, investments you know those are probably going to be fine in real estate you know is going to take a break here a little bit it's going to be in a shifting market but I'm specifically talking about equities mutual funds and stocks um, I believe what we're going to see is because the, 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 the real estate market I mean the financial markets they work they work by pricing in future expectations right and so what happened was over these past years earnings kept growing economy was making money when people make money they spend more money so you make you spend you make you spend well who benefits from all that corporations corporations are having higher revenues they're having higher pro projections and the way the stock market prices that is they start to say wow you know Amazon Apple Facebook they're making all this money today and they're making it at a 30% increase from the last time so if they continue on this path then there we can justify a price up to here based upon that trajectory of where they're heading right so what happens is people buy the stock and the price all of a sudden gets to here even though it's the earnings are not going to get to here for another maybe 12 months usually about a year is how far they go into the future because they want to buy value right they want to buy the stock here because they figure wow this is a value play here because next year it's going to be here based upon what's happening today okay so that's how stock prices run up so on the flip side to that and it's kind of what we are seeing uh, or what we just saw last month um, you know other than the pandemic other than coronavirus um, you know uh, uh, other than the unemployment and, and all of those things you know the biggest uncertainty is what's going to happen to the corporations how are people spending money how are they going to be spending money what are they going to be spending money on um, now everyone is you know tight-fisted and you know reducing expenses you know any type of luxury items or you know any of those things um, are definitely you know not in play uh, at the moment so that's what we saw when we saw the Fed dropping rates we look at it as oh that's a positive thing yay they're dropping the rates so that I can go refinance I can go do this I can go do that you know yes in a way that is a good thing that they're dropping rates it's also a bad thing because the fact that they need to do that they're saying we are terrified we are so scared of what is coming that we have to drop the rates to make money be able to to exchange hands a little more freely a little easier uh, because everyone is going to need it right so as much as it's good news it's also bad news in the fact that uh, <laughs> that it's 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 not you know it, it's out of it's out of a it's out of fear more than anything it's not because they want to be generous and give people all this money no it's because you know the uncertainty of corporate profits earnings all of those things which are going to happen this month right so it's also April 
and that's why the first quarter earnings are going to be reported and I believe what we're going to see well for the first for the most part there's two things that happen right first there's earnings how much I made and then there's projections how much do I plan on making right so for the most part the first quarter earnings for 2020 will be pretty close to in line with what they might have been expecting because for you know 75 percent 80 percent of the quarter business as usual right so we're not going to see the real effects of the coronavirus on the earnings that are going to be reported this month however we will see how companies are altering their projections which is next quarter third quarter fourth quarter next year and so you remember how I said when they start escalating higher well now when they start saying okay before we told you we were going to make this much money now we're going to make this much money well guess what that does to the stock price it's going to go down and there's going to be selling 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 there's going to be panic selling uh, there's going to be fearful selling and this is not going to just happen overnight uh, I think we're going to see this for the rest of the year actually so um, so my advice if you're in a situation I think now we've got this little bounce in the market the Dow Jones is almost 24,000 I think maybe next week maybe this month it may get to 25 maybe maybe it'll get to about 27,000 I think would be the height anywhere between between now and even 27 if you need to sell stock now is the time to do it uh, now is the time because within the next 12 months I'm forecasting the Dow Jones going to be as low as 17 15 maybe maybe it might even touch 13,000 within the next 12 months so that's another if you can stomach another 40 percent drop then hold on to your stocks and let everything stay the way that they are um, but if you're in a position where you have a lot of gains maybe you have some losses that you want to offset or you know you have other things now's a good time to sell if you need to sell right if you want to sell if you need money for some other reason or if you need it now is a good time because and even if you don't right even if you just want to you know even if you pay taxes you have capital gains I believe within 12 months you will have a golden opportunity to repurchase some of the stocks you already have today at a much much lower price and I'm gonna do more of these uh, videos um, as we move forward not every week or every month I'm telling you this right now because this is like for the rest of the year I think right now I'm telling you if you have any doubts or if you have any ideas if you've got a thought before oh, I really wish I had sold I really wish I had sold now is your chance to take advantage that we're getting this little bump up because once these earnings start to show up you know I, I, I believe it's going to be a whole new world um, and it's going to be priced in for the next 12 months so uh, so now is your chance um, on the flip side uh, if you have cash right if you have cash um, and you say wow the markets down let me jump in and buy don't do it yet hold on to that cash cash is king uh, if you have other ways that you can free up money if you're in a good position you have good income coming in start stockpiling your money because towards the end of the year maybe even first quarter of next year is there's going to be a golden opportunity to invest in the stock market for the long term so uh, I don't know when exactly that is as things play out I'll share my opinion with you again this is just my opinion um, I, I, I was a series 7 licensed financial advisor uh, I'm not anymore um, and I have a fairly good knowledge of uh, of the history and history tends to repeat itself and when it does that's why when you see the stock market go down so 
much faster than it goes up is because of those revisions, right? They're being revised from perfect. In a perfect world, this is what these companies are worth. And when it's not a perfect world, it goes down to like here. So you can see it doesn't go just to here or to here. It goes down to there and it goes quickly because people realize, uh-oh, not only these guys are not going to make $5 per share, they're going to make $2 per share, which is, you know, 70% less than what we anticipated or, you know, 80% less of what we anticipated. So that's why prices get affected so drastically. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Um, I'd be glad to help answer anything that uh, you may have, as much as my knowledge will tell me and, and my experience. Um, but that's my advice to you today. Uh, good luck, God bless, and uh, I'll share with you some of my other rational thinking as we move forward in terms of your 401k and all of those things. You know, again, if you're more than five years out um, from wanting to touch that money, Maybe you're fine, um, and you just need to wait, just wait it out. But if you are at an age bracket where I'm going to need the money within the next few years, now might be a good time to do some selling. All right. Again, I'm Ricky Calabat. Thank you for watching, and uh, good luck, God bless, and stay safe. Hi, I'm Ricky Calabat, and welcome to my Leave a Legacy channel. My intentions are to provide you with valuable information that could alter the trajectory of your life by creating new possibilities and opportunities for your future and your family. Today I want to talk to entrepreneurs, small business owners, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, uh, anyone who's in the business of people uh, having appointments, face-to-face -face meetings, um, that kind of thing. Obviously, we're in a challenging time right now. Uh, it's not easy to be able to do that. So what can we do? And small businesses, we should focus on our operations, our business models, maybe some of our marketing, um, and some of our, our CRM. We can clean up our database, right? Because we always talk about our database being so extremely valuable. So. How can we maximize this time? Well, there's a couple of different ways, right? We can still go after new business, right? New, new business is the, the lifeline of you know, all businesses. And we can also contact our database of our past clients. So I want to focus on this one first for a minute because uh, I think we're, some people are missing the mark as to how valuable our database is with the people that we've done business with in the past. Uh, and these could be maybe their clients, maybe their friends, maybe their family, or maybe they're a little bit of everything. Uh, now is the great time to pick up the phone and to reach out to them and say, Hi, how are you? How is your family? How is your business? And then, is there anything I can do to help you? Because I think that is what makes you a real, authentic, genuine person. Is you're calling them just to see how they're doing. How are you coping? How are you handling the situation? How is your family? What, what's going on with the kids? And, and, and all of these wonderful things. Um, and you can touch them in that positive, loving way uh, because you care about them, right? These are obviously people that you've worked with in the past. Um, and you have at least some level of a relationship with them, uh, trust me, it's very, very important to let them know that you're thinking about them and that you do care about them and, and their well-being. Uh, and while you're on the phone with them, maybe you can update your database somehow. Uh, I know what I've been doing is... Um, while I'm having those phone calls, I'm also saying, hey, when, when is your birthday? When is your wife's birthday? Or when is your, your children's birthday? And I'm updating my CRM with their birthdays um, so that they can automatically, uh, they'll be able to get um, a card or an email or both uh, when that special day comes. Everyone loves their birthday, and I think we 
don't take advantage of that uh, as much as we could. So have that genuine conversation with them. And remember, those take a little longer than your normal conversation. So when you block out time, make sure you block off enough time um, because that could be a you know, two-minute conversation or most likely it's going to pop, it could possibly be a 20-minute conversation. Um, but it's a way of really cementing that relationship uh, with the people that you care about. So please, please, please don't forget that aspect of your business. Now, when it comes to new business, um, I mean, you could also, while you're over here, again, do you know anyone that's thinking of selling or buying anytime this year, right? I don't think anyone's, unless there's an urgency factor, I don't think anyone is in a rush to put their home on the market or to buy a home today, given the, given the circumstances. However, if you were to say, hey, do you know anyone that's been talking about doing something this year? Then that would be great, and then maybe you can get that information um, so you have something to look forward to later. And that's kind of the same way I would approach these people, right? New people, maybe you've met them, maybe you haven't. Um, maybe they're, they're someone that are in your database that you haven't talked to in a while, and, and you can reach out to them as well. And you should start off in a similar fashion. How are you? How's your family? How's your business? Is there anything I can do to help you right now? And then you can move into, uh, for these people, I always say, yes, how can I help you grow your business? What's a way, who, who, what is a good referral for you in your business? Because I do have a big database. I do have a lot of connections. I do have influence on online and social media. I do have a following. And I'd love to be able to help you in any way possibly that I can. So provide value, come from contribution, and then somewhere in that conversation, by the way, are you looking to buy or sell real estate or home, whatever it is that you do work with? Um, maybe you can have some kind of uh, information, whatever your industry is. I know, again, I'm 17 years in the real estate industry. I'm the CEO of Miami Living. So... I uh, have been telling people, hey, did you know that you know, 45 homes in your neighborhood came on the market last month, 34 of them sold, and you just have some statistics that are just showing people that business is still happening. Maybe you have a need or you don't today, but just so you know, business is still happening. Things are still moving, um, and I think people need to hear that. They feel a little bit more confident. Uh, take away a little bit of the anxiety of you know the world coming to a halt so that's a powerful conversation to have with people that are in a situation that they may or may not be urgently needing to do something but if they know that still business is happening and then you can say hey if you don't mind maybe we can set up a webinar a zoom call um, I can show you a little bit of the marketing that we do so when the time comes that you are ready to take action, I would love to be able to work with you and, uh, and you know, show you some of the success that we've had with some of our other clients in the past. So those are some amazing ways that you can reach out to people um, during this time, have those kind of conversations with them <clears throat> while you're doing your your normal activities. So if you are going to be doing more housekeeping items, right? So again, your database is your CRM, whatever marketing you can do. Now might be a great time to tweak your marketing a little bit. Um, look at your success from 2019. Um, are there new things that you can add to your marketing pieces? Uh, some new data, some new value items that you have to share that you can incorporate into a, a presentation. Maybe change your, your campaigns, right? The things that you do recurringly on a, a every month or weekly basis to your database. You can revisit that and see if you wanted to change any of the look, the feel, the branding. Talk to marketing people. Um, I know I just hired a new person uh, to help me tweak our branding a little bit. 
And so, um, so this is a good time to do these kind of housekeeping things for our business that can move it forward, keep us active, keep our minds sharp, um, and maybe uncover some new opportunities that are in our database that we uh, just kind of forgot about, slipped through the cracks, we're not following up as much as we should be. And I think that is the one thing that a lot of small business owners struggle with uh, is the follow-up, right? Because we normally take care of the business in front of us. We don't, we don't have, sometimes we're not nurturing the future business. And I think now it's all about nurturing because a lot of the business is not happening tomorrow, but if we nurture it the right way and we create a whole new um, funnel, database, I don't know what you want to call it, a whole new segment of people who want to do something, the time is not right. Put those people as your like A people um, or B plus or A minus, somewhere around there that you make sure that they're in their whole new segment that you just say, okay, I'm going to stay in touch with you and we need to be able to have those clients available ready so that when things change, because I do think it's going to change quickly when it does. I don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow or next month, but there will come a time that it's going to go from not much happening to, wow, a lot of stuff is happening. And so you want to be at the forefront of that a lot that's happening, and you want to be able to hit the ground running, and you want to be able to say, hi, here, this is the plan that we have, and we're going to be able to move forward, and, you know, we're going to get things done, you know, one, two, three, A, B, C, as fast as possible. So prepare for that day, because when it happens, you can't go, oh, yay, the market is back, and everything is back to normal. Now I can start doing something. No, it's going to be too late. By then, they're already going to have people in place and things are already going to be aligned. So you want to be in that position that you have to expect that tomorrow could be that day that everything goes back to normal and if it did happen tomorrow, are you prepared to take advantage of it? That's the question. You have to be ready to go push the button and yes, I'm ready to take advantage of the market when, when it comes back, if it comes back tomorrow, I'm ready right now. Okay, so I hope that helps your business, your mindset, your strategy. Have something to talk about, call people, update your database. Um, if this is your first time on my channel, please uh, subscribe and share. Uh, if you have comments and questions, just put them on there and uh, I will uh, I promise to answer all of them. Okay, listen, good luck, stay safe, God bless, and we'll talk to you soon.